Hello. <laughs> I'm Eshonda Jones, or better known as EJ. And today I want to talk about home birth versus hospitals or midwives and doulas versus doctors and nurse practitioners. Um, let me give you a little bit of background. So what is a midwife? A midwife is more medically trained to assist you with birthing either um, like at home or in a birthing center away from doctors and nurses. Doctors and nurses are even more medically trained to help assist with difficulties of labor, not really um, natural course setting. They're very invasive. You can have a non-medicated labor in a hospital with doctors and nurses because that's what I've done previously. But it is, it's not the same feeling. Um, it's like, they're still very intrusive. They come in your room about every 20 minutes. They want to touch all over you, check you, hook you up to IVs and all kind of stuff like that. Now I can understand if you needed that resource um, because maybe you're having a high risk pregnancy, a difficult pregnancy, maybe even carrying twins, um, having preeclampsia or anything like that. I can understand that. That's perfectly fine. But for a lot of women, we don't even need none of that. And it's very hard to um, feel like you're in control, to feel empowered by doing what a, a woman's body does, which is birth a baby. Um, so for me, I've done four labors in the hospital, non-medicated, no medicines at all, um, natural all the way through. And I didn't like it, but I thought that was my only option. This baby boy right here is my fifth pregnancy and my fourth child. So my fourth pregnancy, fourth child, she passed away. I had a stillborn. She was 31 weeks gestation. So just about seven months. One more week would have been eight months. Um, it was very heartbreaking to deal with, honestly. But after having that experience, I decided, okay, I want to do something different because the hospital settings that I've always dealt with, um, it just I just couldn't tolerate it anymore. I felt like I needed more one-on-one. -on -one. Everything was very general because I had three previous healthy pregnancies. Um, they didn't really look into my fourth one or look into anything that I felt like was a concern. They were like, oh, well, you've had three other healthy, non-medicated pregnancies so and labors and deliveries. So I think you're fine. That was the, the whole argument the entire time that I was pregnant with my fourth baby until she was gone. And then everybody was like, oh. So with this baby, I researched and I thought of a way to get everything that I wanted. Um, I didn't feel doubtful at all about this baby. I felt a little bit anxious just because of the past feelings and the past trauma your body holds, especially when going through something like that, you know, but I had to do something different. So this time I'm doing a home birth. Yay. <laughs> Home birth for me is the goal because I've had all my babies naturally. I think that it would be better, and especially during this coronavirus epidemic where you can't have a support system in a hospital right now. You're going into a place where you don't know anybody to go and have your baby, and you're mixing that with one of the most precious memories of your life. And that... I can't do that. That just does not sit right with me. So I started to look for the alternative and the only alternative I could think of, well, I'm gonna have my baby at home because for one, I don't wanna be exposed to anything that I didn't put myself in harm's way of. And for two, I can't have my baby without his father being there or without my mother being there to support my labor pains. No, I'm not going to have a baby in the hospital with strangers 
with no support system. No way. So with that being said, I just wanted to bring to you the differences of home birth and hospital birth. With home birth, um, there's more support system. It's all about you, what you want, what you need, what you feel like should be done. With a hospital is more what they think, what they are trying to prevent. It really has nothing to do with you or your bodily needs. So all the women who are thinking of having a child soon or is pregnant, I encourage you, I implore you to do your research and look for alternate ways. And honestly, don't get me wrong. When I was younger, I thought that that was fine. You know, I was like, hospital birth, um, sure. Because if anything goes wrong, I want a doctor there to help me. But to be honest, that was when I thought I couldn't do it. That was when I thought I didn't know enough to have a baby, even though my body can get pregnant and have a baby on its own. I thought I needed somebody to tell me how to have a baby. And that's where I was wrong. One example I want to give of my previous labor, one of the nurses told me to push, start pushing, it was time to push. And I told her, no. And they laughed and they thought it was funny and they're like, what, like, it's time to have the baby. And I'm like, I don't think this is right. This don't feel right. I don't remember it feeling like this. And they laughed and laughed and they thought it was funny. What I meant was, I didn't feel like I needed to push yet. When you're in labor as a woman, your body will tell you when to push. Contractions are your body's way of getting the baby out. I wasn't having a contraction, so she was trying to make me push without having a contraction. And what that does is make you strain and it hurts your body. It doesn't help you at all. They think you're supposed to count and push, count and push, and think that it's supposed to work. In actuality, if you push when you are having a contraction, whenever that is, your baby will come out smooth, fine, everything will be great. It's better that way. The, the pushing helps to relieve the contraction, the pain that you feel from your body squeezing the baby down. So that is why I believe it is better to have a home birth or if you're going to go into the hospital, if you are feeling like maybe something can happen, if your doctors or your midwives or somebody told you that maybe you should get that checked out, maybe you do feel like you need more medical attention or more support or something along those lines and the hospital is the hospital birth setting is right for you, then by all means go for it. But that is why I feel very positive about having more support in pregnancy and labor and especially in a hospital setting. And if you don't go to a hospital setting, more support in labor and delivery at home with your doula or with your midwife. And you can have a doula or midwife in the hospital with you. But you also have doctors, nurses, PCAs, janitorial, everybody else is there with you too. The changes that I'd like to see when it comes to the hospital, which is the doctors and the nurses, I'd like to see them be more understanding, willing, um, less, less feeling like they have to be in control of every single thing that goes on with your body and your baby. Um, that may be hard to do because it, they can only do so much and it has to be under control for them to be able to do what it is that they feel like they need to do. They want to try to control the situations, the outcomes for the better. And yes, nobody wants to have mortality when it comes to mothers or babies because of the situation. It's, it's very heartbreaking. But sometimes those things do happen. You can't control everything. Nobody can control everything. I'd like to see that the doctors and nurses start to listen to the mothers more about what it is that they want and try to make that possible for them. In a home birth, you can do a water birth, just like this picture here, where the woman's holding her baby. She's sitting in a tub full of water. She's probably in her living room or kitchen somewhere. 
smiling, holding her new baby with her family, her kids around her. When you go to the hospital, you can't even have your kids there. And especially if it's flu season. And you're only allowed a certain amount of visitors, maybe three when nothing else is going on. Everything is so controlled. It's like you have to deal with that in order to get what you feel like you need or get the best result at the time. As I've gotten older and have my children and felt more confident in my body, I don't want to deal with that anymore. I know better, so I'm going to do better. This is going to be me. <laughs> the way the world will change if things happened according to my uh, perspective, I think that it would be more of a collaboration and not more of a, this is what you need to do. Um, when you can collaborate with somebody, no matter what their job title is, no matter what they do for a living, you know, no matter any of those circumstances, if any two people can sit down and listen and communicate with each other and come to an understanding, I think that more people would feel safer in a hospital environment. And the, the crazy thing is, it's a hospital, but they mostly treat the sick. So if you're a healthy woman going into the hospital with no complications, they're gonna put you in the same categories as a woman who is sick. They ask you the same questions. They give you the same same procedures. They give you is there's no um, individualization. There's no understanding of this is my body. This is what I want. In my experiences, every time I was um, an advocate for myself, every time I spoke up and said this is what I want, it was always pushback. There was never an okay. I understand. This is what we're gonna do. It was always, well, you know, you could run the risk of this or that or like lady, that's not what I asked. That's, I don't care about that. I told you what I wanted. It's just like if you go to a restaurant and you tell them what you want and they tell you, well, you know, eating all this meat, you know, it's very salty. You can have high blood pressure. You ain't asked for that. You asked for what you wanted, right? You're paying for it, right? It doesn't make you feel heard, comfortable, or safe. So I believe the world would be so much better if they actually went over some, to, I don't know what it's called, maybe something that has to do with how you treat your patients and how you how well you listen to them or, or make it less medical, put a little bit more like, natural, herbal, something, something like that needs to happen so that we can have a clear and open discussion about what we want and what we need as women birthing our babies in the hospitals because we are oftentimes not heard. We can't get what we want. If a woman goes into the hospital and says, I want to have a water birth, but I'd like my doctor present just in case anything goes wrong. Because the first pregnancy, I had a C-section. And the second one, I'm doing vaginal. So something could go wrong, but that don't mean it will. First, they'll tell you, we don't do water births. In a water birth, there's so much bacteria. There's bacteria everywhere. There's bacteria everywhere. There's no reason to not have that available to women who request it, need it, or want it. After your idea is shot down about how you want to bring your child into the world, it's kind of just downhill from there. I know because I went through it. I just thought, okay, let me just get through this. I dealt with it. That's hard. <laughs> that's stressful. It makes you feel like you can't trust the person that's down there catching your baby, which is very weird. Because if you can't trust the person, why are they in that secret and secret moment? A midwife is someone who can assist you in birth. They are, um, they have some medical training. They'll be able to um, hear your baby, turn your baby if you need it. They come out to your home postpartum after you have the baby to check on you. You don't have to go anywhere. They'll get your um, your documents together 
so that your baby can be registered basically they help you they're like the middleman of the hospital doctors nurses setting and then the doula very natural almost very non-invasive setting well, when i had a doula she helped me to get very physical and hands-on about understanding how childbirth works understanding the power that i have in my body and my mind to birth a baby and then understanding the importance of what i think and feel i can appreciate both and i appreciate both better and a lot more than i would an actual nurse or doctor they control the setting the environment so that they control um the outcome so if something goes wrong for them you might have a hiccup in labor you might not dilate you might be feeling frustrated or nervous or not as relaxed and they'll suggest a c-section because your labor isn't progressing they're scared they don't want anybody to die so they want to hurry up and make you have the baby so that both of you are living still i understand that but there's so many more steps you can take in between there before that has to happen. And oftentimes it doesn't. There's a lot of women out there who have had C-sections who didn't need them. That don't sit right with me. I go and figure out what's the next thing to do because if I don't listen to my gut, if I don't trust my gut, it's gonna bite me in the butt. So that is why I choose home birth or midwives and doulas over hospitals doctors and nurses. Also, if you look back into history, birthing was always very, very sacred business. It was always women helping women. It was always somebody who's been there, done that, learned how to do it, help another woman do it. It was more individualized to each woman, to what she needed, to her support system. It was a very positive situation. Well, hospitals kind of made it a big business. It's very expensive. <laughs> Look up how much it costs to have a child in the hospital versus having your child at home or in a birthing center. It's ridiculous. The amount is crazy. Why? Why does it need to cost that much for every woman who does not have medical emergency issues? Why? So it's not that I'm against any of the doctors, nurses, or hospital settings. Like I said, there are women out there who need that, but not everyone does. And if that someone is you, just like it's me, find an alternative. If that's okay with you doing that and your insurance covers it and all that kind of stuff, that's fine, you know. But I want you to know and understand that there are more ways out there where you can have your baby literally in your bedroom, where you can be cleaned up and have your baby in your bed, where you don't have to stay in the hospital for three days while people are poking and prying at you. I've been through all of the experiences of being in a hospital, having my child. I cannot wait to have my baby at home <laughs> in my pool my birthing pool and then come upstairs and get in my bed with my newborn and go to sleep and not be bothered <laughs> and then they tell you everything oh no you're not allowed to do that you can't hold your don't fall asleep with the baby no co-sleeping <laughs> i am a breastfeeding mother okay we co-sleep and that's just the way it is yeah Hopefully you understand that this video was made to enlighten and to reassure mothers that there are different ways. You don't have to just go with what the doctor or the nurse says or recommends. You go with your gut, your intuition, your knowledge, your body can do it. You know what you desire. Go for it. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, down in the description box below. Subscribe and share. Let everybody know. A hey. <laughs> that EJ just made another video.
<laughs> I'm so silly. <gasps> ah! Oh, wait. Yeah. Okay. Doctor. I just. <laughs> uh -uh. Can you tell me the video just got edited? Mm hmm Get it together. I have under I have under boob sweat. Oh my god. Take away my comedy license because I shook. <laughs>